It's time for the absolutely... <laughs> I'm on my way! Completely... I'm almost there! Random... Why are there so many stairs? Podcast... Oh, jeez! <clears throat> With Andrew Rhodes. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the absolutely completely random podcast. For Saturday, January 19th, 2019. That's right, it's one nineteen nineteen. And I'm your host, Andrew Rhodes. Still getting over my cold because my voice wants to play the going in and out game. It's an up that I just recorded a couple videos, but uh, we'll get into that later, I guess. So what topics du jour do I have this week for everybody? Well, besides explaining how my week went, which eh, was fun, I have the top 10 90s anime that deserve remakes. Oh, we're going to have some fun on that one, aren't we? Yep. The Robotics Notes Dash Game. Yes, the game that I was talking about. Well, its video is highlighting Ko, Kiji, Ko Kimijima, which for those of you who have seen the series know who I'm talking about. I'm going to be talking about the anime LA Arson that left seven vehicles scorched and the suspect is now arrested. Yes, this is a huge thing that's going on all over the internet. You know the giant Gundam statue, the one of the RX-78-2? Yeah, uh, apparently it was a perfect project for some alleged embezzling. Well, that can't be good. Ah, uh, good old Disney's once again in my podcast this time. I should start charging them rent. The Disney Ambassador Hotels have introduced a new Kingdom Hearts-themed room with a key that literally opens your door in the shape of a keyblade. Huh, that'll be fun. And Super Robot Wars T, the game's 11-minute promo video, has been streamed. Ooh. Seriously, I didn't even realize this game was still a thing at this point, so I'm actually quite impressed slash shocked. So, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's scary. I didn't know it was still a thing. But anyway... All that and more possibly this week on the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. But before I go any further, you know the song and dance by now. If you're interested in anything that I have up for sale on my eBay page, you know, trading cards, oddities, weird stuff, strange things that I picked up here and there and everywhere. You know, I'm sort of like a jack of all crap at this point. Jack in the box? Yeah, I'm a jack of all crap in the box. Check out my eBay page. It's A R H O A D S hyphen 2012 on eBay. Link in the description below. You can check out my eBay page. I might have something there that might tickle your fancy. Something you might want. Something you might want to have for your collection or have because you know somebody that might want it to have that somebody else might want that you have to get something that you want that they have. You know, you may be able to find something, buy it off of me, and then trade it for somebody that has something that you really want but you can't afford. Hey, that actually happens sometimes. So, don't forget, check out my eBay page. A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012 on eBay. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Otaku Roads. And you can also check out the official Web Designer 18 Facebook page. Because it's the 21st century. Why wouldn't I have a Facebook page? Okay, so let's talk about how my week went. Uh, it's usually while I start this off all the time. So, I only had to work. I was only supposed to have to work one day this week, but uh, Sunday, last Sunday morning, I got a call from my store manager asking, "Can I come in, or can I work on Wednesday?" I answered yes and was booked. So, I ended up getting an extra day of work, so that was fine. Uh, also, had a little loss that. I'm a little upset about this week. As many of you know, I picked up a tablet recently. Ironically, bought it at the start of the year. Um, it was a really nice tablet. An oddity, I will admit that, but a good tablet nonetheless. Uh, it was a rec pad, a repad, a retab, or I don't know how exactly it's pronounced, but it was a really cool tablet. Uh, I picked it up because, as many of you know, I'm still searching for a backup slash spare. I'm happy with the one that I got to replace my poor Insignia Flex Elite that died on Halloween last year. May it rest in peace and still be fighting the computer overlords in the next world. 
But I got um, another Insignia to replace it, but it only had one gig of RAM, and I need at least two gig to play some of my games in that. So I didn't mind it. It works for the intended purpose that I need it for, just getting my freebies and still locking in and keeping my stuff active. So that's fine. This one, though, I found the price was moderately all right. In all honesty, it was in my budget to get it anyway, so I picked it up. It arrived uh, on the 5th, and I fixed up everything on the 6th. Then, as you remember, my grandfather ended up going into the hospital, and we had that whole fun show for those few days when I had a vacation where I was spending uh, five days and four nights in sunny living room. Uh, surrounded by couch, chairs, and a floor. Now, it's harder than cement, and it's... I don't even know what the hell it's made out of, to be honest with you. But there was that, so I was, you know, on my tablet during the day. I was, you know, checking this and that, and it worked very well. I want to stress that. I had an issue keeping it charged from time to time, as it would say that it's going to take, like, a day and a half to charge to three days to charge... Or then it would go, it's going to charge in an hour and a half, which apparently, because Android tablets are finicky about what, you know, charger it uses. <clears throat> but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So, uh, yesterday I plugged it in because the battery was getting a little on the low side. So I plugged it in and it was charging up. It was doing the, it'll only take about an hour and a half to charge up. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, that's fine. I'm used to that by now, so I was, you know, checking out YouTube and getting a couple of my freebies quick because, you know, I had to work yesterday morning. I had, Sorry, Friday morning. But no, it was yesterday. This is Saturday. My days are screwed up yet. Well, I had to work in the morning, so I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to get the freebies and that that I need to get. Puzzles and Dragons, um, Contest of Champions quick, check a couple things out, and everything was working out well. Then all of a sudden, the tablet does something weird. Now, the last time this had happened, I really freaked the hell out. I'm not even going to lie. I was freaking the hell out. The tablet kind of gave this weird little noise, and then it was sort of like a pop noise, or just like a little click noise, and then it just completely went dead. The screen went black and everything. Now, it usually makes like a little noise when I'm shutting it down or it's shutting itself down like to restart or something it makes a little it makes a little noise I think most tablets do I don't know if it's like the speaker or something being shut off not getting power to it anymore it's what I'm assuming <coughs> but that happened and I was a little upset about it so I'm trying to fix it and here the screen flickering is on the low setting so if I move the brightness all the way up it, it went away but I had to reset the tablet back to factory conditions and just even get it to function normally. And when I tested it out this morning, thinking, okay, let me let it sit here for like the rest of the day. Don't touch it. Don't do anything to it. Just leave it alone and I'll try it quick in the morning. See if maybe, you know, letting it rest for, an, for about a day or so, you know, would make it better. The tablet won't even stay on now for five minutes. Uh, I plugged it in, I was charging it up a bit, set my thing back up, and it basically dies off in like less than five minutes. So right around, I actually timed it. I turned on the Google Timer and turned the tablet on, and I had it going for, I had the timer going, and it got up to about five minutes. I think it was like 4.59, 45, or 4.59, 59, like literally just about five minutes. And all of a sudden, it went completely off again. And it restarted itself. And I'm getting a little freaked out by this. And I'm a little concerned, a little confused. And I'm like, this is really creepy. So it it's shot, basically. Now, I can't even use it because I can't do anything if it's going to restart itself. And it's doing it if it's suddenly inundated with a tremendous amount of tasks. Because it was trying to download, you know, all the apps and that that it had to do to bring itself back up to date. Because I re had to reset it. And it just still went out and out and out. And there was nothing I could do. So I was a little pissed off slash upset. Because I only had it for two weeks. It only came on the 5th. And I've only had it for just about two weeks that I've been using it. And it's dead. So it kind of hurt. A lot. I'm 
going back and forth right now with the buyer. I just or with the seller, I should say. I told him, you know, just wanted to give him a heads up. Hey, it died after about two weeks. Just wanted to let you know because, I mean, it was a good tablet, but it, it I mean, I got a blast out of the two weeks that I used it, but it just went, it was history then. I was a little pissed and a little bummed. And the person was really nice, sent back a message and said, well, it takes about a two amp charger. You know, you might want to try just getting a different charger that'll work for it. It's a little on the finicky side. I have a whole crap ton of chargers. Um, you would not believe the amount of them you can find, and all of them are two amps. I think I've only seen one that's like a one amp, and I don't even use that, mostly for the fact that I'm terrified to use it because I don't think it's going to work right. But either way, it just it, it bugs me that it just stopped working. It, you know, it's sort of a little upsetting. Uh, I have looked around to get a replacement. I managed to find another Insignia Flex Elite. That was like the uh, original one that I had. So I'm hoping that it'll arrive, uh, that it'll charge, and I should be back in business with my one app. Otherwise, I'm good with uh, Puzzles and Dragons and Contest of Champions. So there is that. But that's how my week went, basically. Uh, I'm still fighting my cold. Because I thought I was on the bend, I was on the mend of it, and then all of a sudden I started losing my voice again, having a hard time like keeping my coughing under control sometimes. So I don't know if it was just like the eye of the storm or what, but either way, it's a little annoying. But that being said, uh, yeah, I got one uh, day I have to work this week. It's a night shift. Not really looking forward to it, but. That's that, then it's inventory, and who the hell knows. But anyway, let's get into the podcast. I've been talking long enough. So let's get into the podcast, and let's get this started, shall we? Okay, so back in the 90s, anime was in a gray area, I want to say. We didn't have the internet to give us information on a lot of it, as Ben at the Sage over at, uh, well, Ben at the Sage will tell you, Anime Abandoned, basically. We didn't have the internet. It wasn't as privileged and as prevy as it is now. And if you did have it, you were basically considered a god amongst your fellow classmates. Otherwise, it was mostly speculation and everything else, aside from maybe hearsay or stuff like that. But anyway, the 90s was a good time for an anime fan to be because there were some decent series that came out. Now, albeit a lot of them didn't stand the test of time, but a lot of them do. Because, well, it's an interesting thing. A lot of stuff is old and nostalgic, while some people claim it to be crap. Others will have a very fond memory of something, while, again, others will say it's crap. That being said, there's a top 10 list of anime series from the 90s that deserve to be remade. So... When you think of the 90s anime, what's the first one that springs to your mind? Because honestly, for me, it's I thought they were cartoons until I learned otherwise. And that was like the late 90s, real early 2000s when I finally learned that. So, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, this is a list, or top 10 list, I should say, that somebody did. And they got votes on it, and yeah. So, basically... It's a list of anime from the 90s that deserve a remake. Some of them on here I've heard about, and there's more than just the 10, because then they also give you up to things like 58, which I guess I'm going to go through. But anyway, there are some pretty interesting things. Now, keep in mind, you could easily ask for any of these to be made. Just gather the seven Dragon Balls, ask Shenron, and then while you're at it, ask him to change the retconning of Goku's backstory while we're at it. But, I mean, nobody really... It's not like we all need Shenron to wish for more Dragon Ball or Sailor Moon. Why we had to get the remake of Sailor Moon, I'll never understand. That was... <sighs> Can't wait to talk about that on the anime GBU. <laughs> but anyway, uh, here's the ten anime series <coughs> that are on this list. <coughs> Coming in at number ten, you have... Uh, and by the way, I do apologize if I mispronounce the Japanese names. They don't all have it translated. Uh, Mamote, or Mamoti Shugo Gintin. Or is translated, Protect Me, Heavenly Moon, Heavenly Moon Guardian. 
which was from 1998 to 1999. Coming in at number 9, we have Hell Teacher Nube from 1996 to 1997. Uh, Nadia, The Secret of Blue Water from 1990 to 1991. Dragon Quest Dino Daibokin, which was from 1989 to 1992, which really shouldn't be on this list because it started in the goddamn 80s. Granted, it was the end of the 80s, but still. Number 7, Boys Over Flowers, 1996 and 1997. Number 5 is New Century GPX Cyber Formula, 1991. Number 4 is Roni Kenshin, Menjin Kaku, uh, Kenkaku Romanten, 1996 to 1998. Number 3 is my personal favorite, Yu Yu Hakusho, from 1990 to 1994. I been saying that that actually does deserve a sequel, spinoff, or continuation. Number two is H2, whatever the hell that is, I've never heard of it, uh, from 1995 to 1996. But the number one spot on this list went to a sports anime, which, yeah, I, I, I don't, I can't fathom why. Uh, Slam Dunk, from 1993 to 1996. I'm not a fan of sports anime, because as I've said many times, if you're watching like a regular show or a fantasy show, you can suspend your disbelief because you don't have to understand something prior to watching the show. But with sports anime and sports manga, I always feel like you need to know the general rules and how this thing is played, basically how that sport is played, in order to get the gist of the series. Otherwise, it's just completely lost upon you because you don't understand it. Whereas other series, you don't have to have a general consensus of understanding to watch or read. With those, with sports series, you do. I always feel that way. So I don't like sports anime or sports manga because of that. That's the top ten list. However, <coughs> there is more. So, yeah. Apparently, Yu Yu Hakusho got 215 votes, by the way. Uh, it was one of the most celebrated shown in battle manga, but it can't quite get ahead of a sports-based sensation. Okay, they were both sports-based sensations. Okay, so... Oh, H2 is a basketball-themed one, too. Oh, for Christ's sake. Oh, never mind. All right, well, if you're curious, though, the remaining of the list is like 60-odd ones... Uh, chosen are lined up as follows. Number 11 is Magic Knight Ray Earth. Number 12 is uh, Fushigi Yugi. 13 is Kamikaze Kaito Genie. Number 14 is Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. I could believe, I understand that. Number 15 is Martian Successor Nadesco. That's a damn good series. I've seen it. 16 is Marmalade Boy. 17 is Cowboy Bebop. Don't even think about it. 18 is Ghost Sweeper Mikami. A tie for 19 is Baby and Me and After War Gundam X. Now, I can see the After War Gundam. Then again, it literally just got released to the Western audience. So give them a chance to enjoy it first before you just flat out say it needs a remake. So basically because of that, we're up to 21 here, which is Midori no Make or Makabo. 22 is Ping Pong Club. Seriously? There's a... Okay. It's not the stupidest title I've ever heard. 23 is Akai Zuken Kacha, or Chacha, which is idiotic if you ask me name-wise. Uh, Kodomo no Omochi, or you know, Omocha is uh, number 24. Number 25 is Magical Tai Talu, or Taluto, or Taluto, or I don't know how to pronounce it. 26 is Goldfish Warning. 27 is Master Cretan, or Keaton. Flame of Rekka is 28, with Himi-chan's Ribbon at 29. Revolutionary Girl Ueda, or Anita, is 30, with Nangoku Shonen Papu, Papuaku Kakun as 31. Neighborhood Story is at 32, with Mobile Suit... Victory Gundam at 33. Seriously? Another Gundam series. 
34 is Karen Canos, his and her circumstances. I've seen that. That's actually not bad, and it's not really dated either, and no, it doesn't deserve a remake, so don't get this off that list. Clamp School Detectives at 35 with Mobile Fighter G Gundam at 36. Seriously, stop ragging on this show. Just because it wasn't liked by a lot of people does not mean it deserves a remake to make it better. It just... Ah, something we want to explain, I guess, sometime. We'll get back to that one later on in another date. Let's see here. Uh, Totome, or Totomo Lucky Man is at 37 with Saint Tail at 38. Record of Lotus War Chronicles of the Heroic Knight at 39 with Ninku at 40. 41 is NG Knight Ramunade and 40. And yes, I can't pronounce that because I can never pronounce that one word at work and we sell that drink. Ako or Okai Densentu Shoot is at 42 with Super Bikuru Man, the Vision of Escaflone at 43. Vision of Escaflone wasn't bad, but eh, let it stay where it is. Uh, Mama Lives the Poyo Poyo Saurus. Or Mama Loves the Poyo Poyo Saurus. My apologies. Is at 45. There's no 44. Oh. It's an interesting little uh, screw up there. Okay. Hmm, all right. Oh, let's see where was. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sorcerer Hunters is at 46 with Sorceress Stabber Orpin at. 47. That's actually a good series, mind you. Old, but very good. Starship Girl Yamato Yoho, or Yoko is at 48 with Turn A Gundam at 49. Oriwa Kukaku at 50 with Getter Robo Go at 51. There's Angel uh, Ririka SOS at 52 with Chisana Obake Achi Kochi Sochi. The hell they come up with these names? At 53. Doki Kiri Doctor. At 54. Maze of the Me Maze the Megaburst Space. Seriously, at 55. Uh, Musashi the Samurai Lord at 56. Murad uh, Daimo. Or Damio at 57, Fancy Lala at 58, and at 59, Excel Saga. And let's see here. And there's a little added note down here at the bottom. At least one of those is panning out so far. Uh, since there's a new Sorceress Stabber Orpin anime on its way. Oh, come on. Seriously, that was not that bad of a series. <clears throat> I mean, sure, it's old, but it was good. They hey, they had an entire video game based off of an adventure, an original adventure, mind you, but they had an entire video game based off of it. Different branching pathways you could choose. God, what? Uh, well, maybe it'll be good. I mean, Gridman was a good series, depending on who it is, but yep. So that was an entertaining list. Never in my life have I ever been so annoyed with anime, but sure, okay. Let's remake half a dozen things because apparently we've run out of good ideas. Like you haven't been ripping off the ones that have existed beforehand, just come up with something better. Ah, I don't understand the world anymore. Alright, so let's talk about Super Robot Wars T. Um, honestly, I'm going to say this. Now, I've heard of the Super Robot Wars game. I have heard about the franchise. I've seen videos of it. Have I ever played it? To the best of my recollection, no. I have played something that had the same engine as it, game-wise, called Zoid's Legacy. Which is basically, to the best of my knowledge of it, it's similar to... Two Ro Super Robot Wars, but it's not the exact same thing. And I'm talking about like the, you know, 2D flat panel style games. I played Zoid's Legacy for, I think it was Zoid's Legacy. So it was, I know it was the Zoid's games for the Game Boy Advance, and you basically played as a weird character that 
Ended up getting the sweet, sweet mech at the end. He got the best Zoid in the whole damn game. But you could control different Zoids. Uh, you met up with characters from different series like Fusers, uh, New Century Zero, New Cen uh, Chaotic Century. A few that I think were just game style only. Either way, you met up with a lot of them, and you just basically improved and improved and improved upon yourself, getting a whole bunch of new friends, a whole bunch of new allies, a whole bunch of new weapons you could use, and man, was it a fun game! Holy crap, was that a fun game! I remember spending hours playing that thing. I didn't even realize the one time how good I would gotten at it, at least how strong I was level-wise. I was holding my own against one of the boss battles, and I literally just kept, as I was piloting the Liger Zero at the time, I literally just kept changing the CAS, or the change armor system, on Liger, and just kept, you know, like every other turn. It's like, okay, I'm going to go Jaeger this turn. I'm going to go Schneider this turn. I'm busting out Panzer. And it's like, to finish it off, I'm going old school Liger, just to finish your ass. It was just that good good i was having that much fun so it was, it was a good game <coughs> but if you're in japan on march 20th and you own a playstation 4 and or a nintendo switch well then you're gonna get ready to have a lot of fun of course you can also play it in an english release in southeast asia on the ps4 and the switch on the same day but I don't know if we're going to get it here in the U.S. Probably not knowing our luck, but you never know, we might. Anyway, Bandai Namco. Uh, that's how I feel about them. Uh, began streaming a new 11-minute promotional video. Uh, this would have been last Friday. This just literally missed getting my podcast uh, last week because of... Uh, I think it was last Friday. So I don't think it was today. No. Yeah, no, it was, it was last Friday. Um, it missed it getting on because they only put the article up on the 11th. So that's why it missed getting out for me. But either way, uh, and this is sort of what's funny here. So the game's going to launch, like I said, for the PlayStation 4 and the Switch. But they started uh, streaming the 11-minute video. And the videos, I got to admit, it's pretty good. I've watched it. It's actually interesting, weird, but interesting. Uh, see, the T in the, in the game's title refers to Terra, meaning Earth. I could really go on the rest of my life without knowing that, but sure, thank you for telling me. In Japan, you're going to have uh, regular physical and digital copies that are going to cost 8,600 yen, or about 76 US dollars. Holy hell, 76 bucks? Jesus Christ! A limited time premium anime song and soundtrack edition is going to cost you 12,600 yen, which is about 111 US bucks. <coughs> Holy Christ. Sweet dear God. I think my wallet just I think my wallet just went in the cardiac arrest from that. Uh the super premium edition or whatever they're going to The one that's going to cost you more money. Uh, it's going to include 35 additional songs. The first copies of the game will include a code players can use to download the special scenario. Chapter 0. Proposal number T1023. The present scenario, special starter pack, and the original mech, uh, Gespent. I hope I pronounced that right. Anyway, it's... Okay, so... Basically, the first copy of the game. So if you're interested in this, you have to basically stand outside of whatever game store you're going to buy this at. Or any department store. However you're going to get your hands on this. you got to get one of those first copies. And it's going to have a code. But you punch the code in, and then you're going to get a special scenario, a starter pack, and an original mech. And let me guess, does that include the $111 that I have to pay if I want the limited time premium anime song and soundtrack edition? Or is that also included in the $76 
basic, here you go, sorry you didn't feel like spending an extra what? 45 bucks. No, 35 bucks. <clears throat> no, I don't feel like paying the equivalent of what it's probably going to cost me to put gas in my car to drive there just to get myself a song and soundtrack edition. The game is going to feature characters and mecha from the following series for the first time. Uh, Arcadia of My Youth, Endless Orbit SSX, Magical Knight Ray Earth, that sounds familiar, Expelled from Paradise, and Cowboy Bebop. Now, I remember Cowboy Bebop, but I don't remember there being robots in Cowboy Bebop. I remember there being spaceships. You had the Bebop. You had Spike's ship, and you had, um, what's her name? Was it Faye? You had her ship. I don't, for the life of me, remember there being robots in Cowboy Bebop. But okay. We'll go with that. <coughs> but we're also going to get returns from the following series as well. Muteki Robo Tider, or Trider, G7. Aurora Baller Dunbine. Aurora Baller Dunbine. The Tale of Neo Bistonwell. Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam. Mobile Suit Double Zeta. And that's Z Gundam and Gundam Double Z, but I know him as Zeta and Double Zeta. Mobile Suit Gundam Shars Counterattack. Mobile Suit Gundam Shars Counterattack. Bellow Traka's Children. Never heard of that one. Mobile Suit Crossbone Gundam. Mobile Suit Crossbone Gundam Skull Heart. Mobile Suit Crossbone Gundam Steel 7. Mobile Fighter G Gundam. Armor Trooper Votamos. Armor Trooper Votamos, the last red soldier or shoulder. Armor Trooper Votamos, big battle. The big brave might gain. Or the big or sorry, the brave express might gane. Gal Gygar, King of the Braves. Gal Gygar kicks ass. Gunbuster, Martian success, uh, successor Nadesco, the motion picture Prince of Darkness, Getter Robo Armageddon, ooh, that's a good one, Mankaiser Z Infinity, and Gun X Sword. Okay. You're also going to get, though, a new uh, Super Robot Tyson Double D, uh, Super Robot Wars Double D smartphone game. It's also going to launch for iOS and Android. Devices in Japan in, ja in 2019. In Japan! <coughs> so apparently, us here in the U.S. are getting the middle finger. Why does this sound like another Century Zero all over again? Ace was a cool game. I kept finding the openings for it. I kept finding, you know, like... Um, gameplay footage of it, and I'm like, this game looks amazing! Where the hell is this game at? And then I find out it was in Japan only game. That would have went gangbusters over here in the US! Holy Christ, that would have went nuts over here! Uh, the most recent game in the franchise, Super Robot Tyson X, or Super Robot Wars X, launched for PlayStation 4 and PS Vita in Japan on March 2018. The game then shipped in Southeast Asia, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, the Philippines, and Indonesia, with English subtitles in April 2018. Bandai Namco Entertainment also released a Super Robot X Omega smartphone game in October 2015 and continues to add new characters and mecha. So again, we don't get the good stuff. Seriously, Japan, come on, give us something good. I kind of feel like that kid at that Nintendo conference all the time looking at Reggie in the front row. Come on, Reggie, give us Mother 3. Come on, Japan, give us the good shit. Give us the good shit. God damn. <clears throat> so, for those of you uh, in Japan that are uh, listeners of my podcast, congratulations, you lucky bastards. You get the good stuff again. For those of us here in the U.S. and in the West that want to play it, 
We have to get ourselves a region system that's good for your region and buy the game and import its ass, costing us more money. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it, and if you do play it, let us know how much fun it is, because it seems like it's going to be fun. I really, really hate the fact that we don't get to play it. It sucks. All right, so I talked about that Robotics Note game. I talked about it, I remember, a few times. Well, the new video that's come out for the game is highlighting Ko Kijimi, Kimijima. Or Ko Kimijima. That's how it's pronounced. He's the main villain of the series. For those of you that have never seen the series, let me give you a brief rundown of it quick. <coughs> Yes, eventually, and sorry about that, I had to cough and um, quickly take care of something. Um, I will be talking about it on my anime review series as well. At some point, I have to rewatch it again to really get the whole picture again. But anyway, um, let me just give it to you in the TLDR version. People live on an island. Jackass was on an island. Jackass affected the one girl's sister. She ended up killing the guy. He ends up plotting revenge by downloading himself as a computer virus and infecting her, making her do his bidding. People end up getting hurt. Robots end up going crazy. There's a sabotage of a space launch. And a whole bunch of kids that are building a giant robot as a club project are tasked with saving the world. There you go. That's pretty much it. That's that's the TLDR version. I'm I'll get into more of it later on, like I said, when I review anime series later this year. Hopefully starting that in February, who the hell knows. But yeah. So uh five BP began streaming a video on Saturday. This has been last Saturday, by the way, for Robotics Notes Dash, the sequel game to Images Robotics Notes Visual Novel. The video shows a scene of the character Ko. Kokumijima, uh, declaring war on the protagonists. <coughs> now, to be fair, this guy was a psychopath in the game, in the anime series. He basically locked up a girl in an isolation chamber and digitized her soul, as it were, her mind, to basically be nothing more than an interactive AI. He hid a crap ton of incriminating evidence against himself with challenges that one character did and had a couple others to do in order to get all the reports. The guy is a nut job. He's a psycho. The sequel story, though, is going to center around the former members of the Robot Club after they've graduated high school. Steins Gate character uh, Itaru Daru Ishida is joining the cast. Uh, Zwei is performing the game's opening theme song, Advent Story. Or Avant Story. Uh, the game's going to launch on the PS4 and Nintendo Switch in Japan <laughs> on January 34th. On January 31st. Sorry, there's no 40, 34 months in the year in a month. That'd be cool, though. Uh, Mages will also release Robotics Notes Otaku or yeah, Otoku set collection featuring both Robotics Notes Dash and Robotics Notes Elite for PlayStation 4 and Switch on the 31st as well. The original Robotics Notes PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 visual novel, the third in Mages and 5B, uh, PB's Science Adventure series, um, after yeah, after Chaos Head and Science Gate shipped in Japan in 2012. A PlayStation Vita port title Robotics Notes Elite dubbed in 2014 with new animated scenes. Uh, Spike Chunsoft is planning to release the game in the West. Robotics Notes Elite received a Switch version in Japan on November 22nd. So we are possibly getting this game in the West. Ah! Sorry. Uh, the game inspired a television anime in 2012. Funimation released a series in North America. It was a game that inspired the television anime, really. Okay, we'll go with that. Either way, it was still a good series. I'm planning on uh, that's I'm planning on that being a GBU 
uh, episode. Believe me, I, I have... I'm actually starting to get a list up of the anime that I want to review for that so I can start getting it prepared so I can rewatch it and learn. Especially when I want to talk about something that's good, bad, and ugly. But anyway, this is exciting, first off, because the video really makes uh, Ko, Ko Kamijima look like a jackass. And the guy was a jackass. I mean, he was full-blown jackhole of a jackass in the series. So this video really sells that point home. That really drives that home that he is the grade-A jackass that you know and remember from the series rolled into a new form. It's thrilling. It's interesting. I'm not going to lie. Is it worth watching the trailer? Eh, if you're going to get the game, yes. It's worth watching. If not, eh, it's not really worth your time. But... It wasn't bad, I'm just going to say that. But seriously, though, uh, Ko Kimijima is a jackass. Holy crap. I mean, he's an asshole through and through, but seriously. That being said, though, uh, it is a miracle, though, that the series is going to get, basically, uh, it's hopefully going to get a Western release. God knows that's been overdue for getting some good stuff over here. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I mean, hopefully some or all of the games get released over here. That would be nice, but we'll never know, I guess, until it happens. Here's hoping it happens. Seriously, that'd be amazing. All right, so this is a story that's been going all over the internet. Now, I have seen this up on Twitter. I have seen this up on Facebook. Uh, Bruno, who's part of the Bruno and Mia MMPR Toys channel on YouTube, talk, uh, talked about it in one of his recent videos. I've seen the GoFundMe up for this. So here's the thing. <clears throat> and I want to say this first off. Uh, when something bad happens, there's two different ways to handle it. You can either um, speak about it and talk about it with the jawbone of an ass. Or you can speak about the information that comes out and stay as neutral as you can. I am going to try my damnedest to stay as neutral in this as possible. Yes, I have some opinions, but I'm going to keep them to myself. They're mostly neutral opinions, but I'm still just going to keep them to myself regardless because I don't want them to come off the wrong way. So, at Anime LA, apparently an incident happened. Now, this article was published on the 14th. This incident apparently happened, I'm assuming, last weekend. Don't quote me on that. So an arson case that took place during uh, Anime Los Angeles uh, convention ended up spreading from a single car to seven cars, leading to scorched vehicles in the Azure Hotel and Suites parking lot. Uh, video surveillance supposedly showed a man dumping two cans, two cans of gasoline on the first car, failing or yeah, failing to set it ablaze with his cigarette, and then finally getting the job done with his lighter. First off, Mythbusters proved that you can't do that movie thing where you flick a lit cigarette onto gasoline. Gasoline is a liquid. Yes, it's combustible, but it's still a liquid. Any liquid that has a higher density will put out a fire that isn't constantly going. A cigarette is not going to light something ablaze if it's soaked in gasoline. Because gasoline, think of it like rubbing alcohol. Or uh, hand sanitizer, I should say. When you're rubbing it on your hands, it's evaporating quickly. Because hand sanitizer, I learned, ironically, from a radio show, that it is basically an accelerant. Very scary to think about that every time I use hand sanitizer. I'm basically rubbing an accelerant on my hands. Scares the living shit out of me. Not going to lie. Anyway, it's not going to set it ablaze. Mythbusters proved that. There's that. Um, so, Ontario. Wow. Okay. There's an Ontario, California? All right. But anyway, uh, the police there have since arrested the suspect, a 27-year-old man. I'm going to omit the name. It's in the article, but I'm going to admit it. Uh, on suspicion of arson. 
Apparently, this guy knew the owner of the car he initially targeted. And convention attendee... Uh, I really don't want to say this name either, but... I... No, I'm going to omit that too, again, in the article. Uh, so anyway, the convention attendee later confirmed this on Instagram. Uh, describing the arsonist as an obsessed stalker who targeted and attacked her vehicle specifically. Now, here's the thing. I have no say in this whatsoever. This is a cut and clear uh, stalker case. There's really no good way to ever handle a stalker. I mean, you, th th there really isn't. I have had one stalker I've had to deal with in my entire life, and happily that ended with the stalker moved. It was a kid that I went to school with, hung around me like the plague. I felt a little creepy and uncomfortable, but I had very little friends, so I didn't say anything. Kid moved. I didn't have to worry about it then. It basically righted itself. Yes, there's a way to handle this, uh, restraining orders, stuff like that depending on how it is, there are things to do. But when it comes to a stalker, there's really very little you can do because they're going to find you either way. It's a, it's one of the creepiest things out there. And like I said, it's just it's very weird. But so here's the thing. Um, apparently this person was stalking the other person and he set her car on fire. Now... Bruno and Mia know the person. The ones that do the MMPR Toys reviews, uh, they're in charge of that channel on YouTube. They know the person because he was talking about it in his latest video, saying about how her car was set ablaze, and her insurance is not covering this because California insurance is expensive as all hell for vehicles. Hence the GoFundMe page. She literally lost her car. It's it, it, from the picture, it is gone. There is nothing. You can't even sell this thing for scrap. It is completely destroyed. <clears throat> I mean, from the picture here, I can the, the seats are literally just a frame. There is nothing on them. The steering wheel looks like it's melted. The console is gone. The dashboard is gone. I can see clear through to the engine block. At least what I'm assuming is the engine block. I can see clear through to that. I can see charred remains. There is nothing left of this car. This thing is completely destroyed. The cars around it, singed. You can see that. There is some damage to them. But either way, you know, it's just... It, it's uh, horrible to see. It really is. But uh, the GoFundMe page was started because she has no way of recuperating of recouping her loss. Because her insurance is not going to cover this. Her car insurance will not cover this in California because it's so damn expensive. And this has been proven by several other people, mind you, uh, since this incident came out. Because apparently some people have said, well, why didn't she just get, you know, fire insurance for her vehicle? And it was made apparent that it is extremely expensive. I wouldn't doubt it. Mostly because, keep in mind, California is highly prone to natural disasters, i.e. earthquakes, things like that. It is possible in an earthquake for a gas line to rupture, a car to be set ablaze, because the gas line gets nicked with something, catches fire, and there you go. So, there is that issue. Does it? Is it a good thing? No, it's a horrible thing. But... Uh, the GoFundMe is set up. Again, there is a link. I believe there's a link in here. Is there a link in here? Okay. Uh, there is a post with the link. Let's see what that... Okay. There's a post that will take you to the Instagram page for the person. Uh, and I'm assuming that the link is on there for the GoFundMe. Yes. The link is then in the Instagram... On the Instagram page for the GoFundMe. So there is that. Either way, this is really horrible. I feel really... I, honestly, I feel really bad for her. I really do. 
Because this is honestly horrible. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, coughing, I mean. Uh, seeing some of the other pictures here, this thing is just, it, it, it's gone. You can tell the stalker really set out to do a number on this. This is really, wow, it's, oh my, damn. Okay, so looking at the actual inside here, there's a picture of the inside. You can see the console and dashboard are completely destroyed. It looks like the radio is literally hanging by two wires. That is it, and it's burned to a crisp. There is no seats. They look like they have been burned asunder. Oh, oh wow. Okay, forget it. The radio isn't even hanging. Everything is just melted. Dow, that is just... Wow. Okay, there's the uh, pictures of the back seats, which I think look to be about the only thing that survived a bit, I think, was probably the back of the trunk. Wow, it's just... Whew, damn it. Like I said, you can see the pictures. They're in the... Uh, they're in the article. Link is in the description for the article. I might just even just link the GoFundMe uh, page right into my description. If it's still active, I'll check uh, when I'm putting this up. If not, or if I forget, it's you can just click the thing, take go to the Instagram page, and it's in the Instagram page. This is really, really sad. It Honestly, this is. And this could have been so much worse, too, because judging from the damage that this car has... <clears throat> and I want to stress this because I liked watching a lot of shows where they reconstruct scenes and they reconstruct things, see how this happened and everything else. Judging from the damage that this car is in, if she would have been in this, it could have been so much worse. She would not have survived. There is no way uh, she would have survived this. Or if she did, she would be way worse a hell of a lot of pain. She'd be burned third degree, at least third degree, I would assume, burns over at least 90% of her body if she would have been in this car. So first off, I, to the best of my knowledge, she's fine. I want to stress that right here and now. Um, seriously. But this is horrible. Uh, but th this car is burned to a cinder. I'm just taken back to that movie Volcano and I'm just kind of remembering what some of the burned out cars looked like that were in the one scene before they started melting. And this thing just looks, holy shit, there's like nothing left of this thing. Wow. This could have been, even the gap where the uh, brake pedal and the accelerator are is just, you can't even see a gap there. It's like everything just melted and just shifted straight down. That is really bad. That is... Oh my God! That this, this could have been so much worse. So it is a miracle um, that this was not worse than it is. But either way, uh, the suspect has been arrested. Hopefully, uh, something like this doesn't happen again. But I will uh, say this right here and now, because um, with incidents like this happening at conventions where you have stalkers, uh, the whole incident with Jason David Frank, I think that was uh, last year or the year before at. That one convention where that one person said that they, you know, had it planned out. They wanted to go there and kill him. Stuff like this, I will say this. Uh, and I, 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 after seeing that, I have to agree 100%. Conventions, I don't care if it's in a parking lot. I don't care if it's at a hotel. I don't care if it's in a strip mall that has a big ass store you're renting out for an entire day to do it. <coughs> I'm honestly going to agree with this that a convention of this size or any convention period, you need to have security all over that place. Like security on the outside, walking around, driving around the parking lot, making sure that, you know, like everybody that's for the convention has to park in one spot or one section, and you just have the person either walking around there or driving around there in a golf cart or something just to keep an eye on the place. Uh, security on the inside, I, I agree wholeheartedly at this point with that. Now, I'm not saying that this is like going to be the poster child or something for it. I don't think anybody wants that. I'm just saying that this is honestly, if, if you need another example uh, to pile on to the examples ahead of you, this is a perfect one because this could have ended so bad. 
I'm not even joking. You see the pictures in the article. I will put this one, the, the link's in the description. I'll try to put it up near the top, like one of the first ones. If not, it's in the description. You can read it. You see the pictures for yourself. It is truly horrifying. This could have ended so, so much worse. I'm not even joking on that. This could have ended so badly. And it's just a miracle that it didn't. I, I want to say that, but oh my God, that's just, that was, that, that's, that's horrifying. It, it really is. All right, so going off of one crime, let's go to another one across the ocean this time. You know the giant Gundam statue? When I was talking about at the start, the uh, RX-78-2, the one that had the LED lighting, the one that had the big, cool draw, I think the one that they wanted to make move by 2020. Yeah. Apparently... It was a good thing for an alleged embezzling scheme. So, here's the deal. Uh, it's Tokyo's giant Gundam statue. But uh, two former employees of Bandai decided that they loved this statue for a different reason. According to reports from the Tokyo Reporter and ANN News, ex-employees whose names I am omitting have been arrested on suspicion of using the giant Gundam to allegedly embezzle money. The crime reportedly, and this is the part that scares me, drained around 200 million yen, or 1.8 million American, from the company between July of 2013 and November of 2016. How did this alleged crime go down, you ask? Bandai is accused of the two idiots, at this point that's what I'm going to call them, of faking documents in an effort to inflate the budget for certain items, such as a 100 million yen or about $914,000 listing for LED lighting. Yeah, LED lights are expensive, but I doubt they're that expensive. Uh, one of them confessed to the crime after Bandai's internal investigation drummed up the funky numbers back in October of 2017. The other, however, claims that he had nothing to do with it. <coughs> You're an accessory after the fact, Jack Hole, regardless. If you knew about it... If you knew about it... You're an accessory after the fact. That's because you had nothing to do with it. If you knew about it, you're an accessory after the fact. But, I mean, th this is honestly a, scat a very sad thing here. So, take you something that's beloved by so many people and basically taking it and ripping it off and using it for your own money. Now, this makes me remember that uh, Baby Blues episode is called uh, The Bitterman Hillbillies where Carl Bitterman gets promoted to the big leagues. He gets to become a major league uh, groundskeeper. And he basically cuts corners and pockets the money. So, yeah, I feel the same way with that, but... Yeah, I kind of see their point. It's annoying. It's this is First off, it's illegal because you're embezzling. But it's annoying for the fact that you're tainting something that people love that every time they see it they're going to go, you know, that was an embezzling scheme. It's sort of like the whole DeLorean fiasco. Everybody that sees a DeLorean the first thing they think of is somebody's running coke. And you can Google search it. You'll get Google search it, you'll understand what I mean. But long story short, the person that created the DeLorean uh, got money to fund it and the money to fund it was via drugs. Um... Yeah, sad story, hence why DeLorean uh, didn't last out of the 80s. But still, this is just sad. I mean, I, like I said, I know LED lights are expensive, but I doubt that they are that expensive. Even for something this big, because you could get those strips that it probably cost a hell of a lot less. Wiring this thing up would cost you less money. It, that was bullshit. Uh, I think Bandai Namco, or Bandai, sorry, Bandai should have instantly started smelling something was up uh, right off the bat. 
something should have instantly came to them and said, hmm, you know, um, something ain't right here. Now, yes, I can hear somebody go, but what if they got a bad batch of LEDs? Well, then you return them, get a refund, and then get a set that works. That is possible. But still, it's just, uh, it's horrifying, basically, to realize that that... Uh, is what happened. And, I mean, it's just... Damn. That, that's horrible. To think that, you know, something that's brought so much joy to people, everyone that loves this giant Gundam statue, and now it's basically... Like I said, it's going to be remembered as, well, look, there's this thing that people use to embezzle money. It's just... Wow. But like I said, you know, that's, that's nothing new if you have something like that, but still... The fact that it's embezzling money. Ugh. It cheapens Gundam. It really does. Alright. Good old Disney. Yes, Kingdom Hearts is becoming a huge thing. And Disney's even jumping further and further on the bandwagon. Not like you don't already have your Disney characters and your Disney properties in the game. But sure, what the hell. Let's just sink it a little further in here, shall we? So, the Disney Ambassador Hotel at Tokyo Disney Resort is getting something very special this year. I would hopefully say a price reduction in how to get into the parking lot or and or into the resort. But sure, let's go with something even more special that's going to cost you more money. <coughs> so, basically, uh, it's something so special, in fact, that it takes an actual keyblade to access it. Okay, it's not an actual Keyblade, but it's a small-scale replica, according to the article, uh, that are on hand for anyone who feels like staying in a Kingdom Hearts-themed hotel room in 2019. Yes, that's right. Do you ever think about staying at a Kingdom Hearts hotel? Yeah. Well, hold that thought. Now, there are pictures of the hotel, or at least the room, and I will admit it is beautiful. Even the replica Keyblade is nice, though... It would have been nicer if they would have actually cut out the crown part on the key itself. But beggars can't be choosers. Seriously, though, that's really your only misstep in this? Yeah. But anyway, those who stay in this, in one of the rooms, will get to keep their keyblades and some postcards. <laughs> <coughs> All for the low, low price. Are you ready? Can I get a drum roll, please? All for the low, low price of... $424 American or 46,100 yen a night. That's right. So if you got an extra... So if you're going over to Japan basically Tokyo Disney Resort, and you can pay to get into their parking lot, and you can get past the front desk, and if you have an extra $424 a night to stay there, you too can get your hands on a Keyblade, and some postcards, and sleep in a Kingdom Hearts-themed hotel room. Yeah. Not exactly worth the price of entry, and I guarantee you, I, I guarantee you this right here, right now. Somebody is going to go over there, somebody is going to get one of these keys, and they're probably going to look at this and go, I'm going to make a shit ton of money selling this thing on eBay. And they will sell it on eBay, and they will make a crap ton of money, and that'll be the end of it. Because... If this is the only way you're going to get it, and it comes in a box saying Disney Ambassador Hotel, copyright Disney, and the Keyblade is literally there. Literally, all somebody has to do is just package the thing up, put it in a box, and sell it on eBay. It is that simple. Mark my words. You will see this on eBay. I guarantee it will be on eBay. Some way, some form, somehow, it will find its way on eBay. I guarantee it. I'm not even joking. I guarantee you this will be on eBay somehow. 
<coughs> it's probably going to cost like five, six hundred dollars because it's going to be a rarity. People will sell that thing. Someone will keep it just for the nostalgia if they had a really good time. But somebody is going to buy that, stay in the room for one night, keep the key, and they are going to literally blow that thing on eBay, and that's going to be it. And from the looks of the key, from the looks of the keyblade, it literally looks like it costs like maybe five bucks to make, maybe ten, because it looks like it's 3D printed. So I'm going to say like maybe ten bucks to make. 15 maybe at the most, 5 at the low end, and 15 at the high end. It's They're making profit off of this either way. They're paying for their electric bill. They're paying all the overhead, I guarantee you, because they're going to have a lot of people that are going to want to stay at this. And like I said, that's going to be a lot of people just selling those keys for like five dollars $600 to get their money back. They're going to make a profit off of this, I guarantee you. Mark my words, these things are going to sell on eBay. Somehow, some way, they're going to find their way on eBay. Mark my words. But for $424 a night, no, that does not sound like a price that I'm willing to pay to sleep in a Kingdom Hearts themed room, which doesn't really have much in the Kingdom Hearts theme other than some pictures on the wall of Kingdom Hearts related stuff. A table that has the symbols that look like from Wonderland, <coughs> and a bed that has what looks like, I want to say, uh, Riku and King Mickey on the one, and Sora, Donald, and Goofy on the other. No, I do not believe that $424 a night is worth this. No way in hell! And we're talking Disney Resort here, so that's, we're talking high-end. I mean, this is, you know, you come here to piss out a couple thousand dollars. It's probably going to cost you 50, 60 bucks just to get into the parking lot. And you're charging $424 American a night. Whew. Holy hell. But anyway, reservations kick off on January 30th, and it's open for business this March. So if you want to start saving your pennies... You can go over to Japan and you can spend an entire night in a Disney-themed hotel room based off of Kingdom Hearts at their Ambassador Hotel at the Disney Tokyo Resort and get yourself a Keyblade and some postcards all for the low, low price of $424 American or 46,100 yen. And at that, I say, screw you. Because that is highway robbery. Alrighty, folks, and that's going to do it then this week for the absolutely, completely random podcast before my voice goes out any further than it already is. So, as usual, if you have any topics that you'd like me to talk about here on the podcast, feel free to send them my way via the discussion page on my channel. Drop them off on my Twitter page, at Otaku Roads, or drop them on the Facebook page, WebDesigner18 on Facebook, or email them to the podcast, email acrpodcast, all lowercase, at gmail.com. Don't forget, the Q&A video for January is coming up. I Please have all your questions in by next Saturday. I'm hoping, hoping to record the video on the 29th. I had to do inventory on the 27th and the 28th. Uh, one at a different store than one at the store I work at. So work's going to be the 27th and 28th. I'm hoping to have the video recorded the 29th or the 30th and have it up on the 31st. God hoping. I'm not even joking on that. That's what I'm hoping. Worst case scenario, uh, I'll put something up on... My discussion page, my Twitter page, and my Facebook page if I have to change the date when the questions are due by to record the video in time. I will put something up. Trust me. I will give you fair warning. Otherwise, look forward to the Q&A video when it comes out. Look forward to the upcoming new series of mine that are coming out, the Anime GBU and Andrew Discusses, both of which starting, I would like to say, in February, but nothing set in stone at this point. And until next time, I'm Andrew Rhodes, and this has been the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. I now return you to your regularly scheduled day already in progress. Until next time we meet, bye everybody and have a wonderful week.